I'm John Paul Flame, joined by Jason Bishop, Johnny Cake Sawville, and Eric Bickle. And joining us right now in studio, former Redskin, I believe from 2010 through 2015, Logan Paulson, who's now going to be calling the D.C. Defenders game. Yes, he is. Starts on Saturday, 2 p.m. against the Seattle Dragons. You can listen live right here on 106.7 The Fan. And your play-by-play -play partner is going to be Grant Paulson. And Grant's supposed to be here, but it's shocker, he's stuck in traffic. <laughs> he's yes. not used to coming in early. He sent, like, a text or tweet last night. He's like, hey, I'm going to be on the junkies bright and early. I'm like, it's the last <laughs> hour of our four-hour show. <laughs> not that it's early. It's not bright and early. Yeah. yeah, but welcome, man. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's good to it. see you. Uh, I was just looking. I mean, before we get into the XFL, you got, I mean, how proud are you? You played 120 games in the NFL, dude. Yeah, you know, like. It's unbelievable because, like, you're always kind of hungry. You want more. You want to do more of this. You, like, you look at other people's careers, and you're like, oh, man. And then you think about it, and you're like, man, I was so blessed to be able to do that and play for as long as I did and get to play with the people that I did. Like, I played with Julio Jones and Matt Ryan, Chris Cooley here, Donovan McNabb, who's, right. like, my mom's favorite football player. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. – Like, you had a ridiculous you, career. Yeah, so when you look at it, you're like, man, I was so fortunate. And you were undrafted. I mean, that's yeah. Yeah, tough I mean, to yeah. get break into the league. You're a unicorn. And yeah, I mean, I like to think so. How yeah. often did you <laughs> think crazy. you might be cut? Every every day. <laughs> every single day. Is that true? Yeah, 100%. Like, I, there was never a day that I went who in that the, I was... When you broke in, so it was Cooley, who was the... It uh, was like the number two... Fred, Fred Davis. Davis. Fred yeah. Davis, man. Yeah. yeah. Talented group. You have to have a good Fred Davis story to share. At I mean, least one. Everyone's got a good Fred <laughs> yeah, Davis story. I would think. <laughs> right? Uh, there was, Fred Davis always kind of had this, uh, this ability... To come to practice, and he'd always have kind of that funky smell, like he'd been out all night. Right, ah, right. and uh, you're like, man, like I don't know how he's he's doing it. And then he would just come, no warm up, no nothing, and just be able to run a thousand miles an hour of practice right, every right. single day. Just a freak. And you're just like, how do you I do it? Do he's it, like, yeah. I don't even like he doesn't even think twice about it. But right. he just had it his whole life. Yeah, yeah, yeah just had it. Just that's blast. Exactly right. <laughs> blast. Is yeah. Fred Davis still in the area? Oh, that's what I heard. I was just talking to. Yeah, uh, isn't he like Adam's yeah. buddy? Yeah. 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 Like yeah. He's really yeah. slumming because he's hanging out with Avon yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not good. Remember he was allegedly going to be like an investor <laughs> in the Play to Win podcast? Hey, it still might God. happen. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Fred might you're, still do that? You're waiting for that yeah. angel investor money? <laughs> yeah. You take your, me to the next level. Yeah. When you look at you were you were a Kyle guy, right? You were yeah, a Kyle Shanahan guy. I was a Kyle Shanahan guy. guy. What do you think of, I was defending Kyle earlier in the day. I watched Tim Hasselbeck yesterday on ESPN. I'm sure you didn't catch it, but I happened to catch where he's saying, you know, this criticism of Kyle in the last five minutes is crazy. And he went through play by play. And he showed how they had an eight-man front. It was not smart to run right here. You run this play. It was there. Garoppolo didn't execute. So the next play. Boom, it was there. It didn't execute. What do you think of the criticism? Yeah, I tend to agree with that. Just looking at like looking at the last eight, seven minutes of the game. Yeah. Uh, you know, because everyone's like, he should have run the ball more. But I think he started each drive with a run. He got yeah. in like a third and manageable. And like if you're looking, if you're playing the percentages, sec like second and five, six, yeah. it's a good passing down, right? You're going to go a heavy box in that, in that time frame of the game. Yeah. So you might as well like take advantage of it and, and – play into uh, what the defense isn't expecting, I think, and like it just makes good football sense. And I think everybody can sit here and second guess, you know, like, oh, he, he should have done that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I, you know, like, I'm not faulting anybody for that, but in the moment and like those decisions, I think those are the right they decisions. They were sound decisions in yeah. the moment. But here's my problem, but Jimmy G wasn't executing, so I think you got to go somewhere else. Uh, but, and that's the other thing. I think, like, you know, Kyle's big philosophy <laughs> is that, like, you, uh, everyone thinks like you possess the football by running the football. You possess the football by getting first downs, right? Yeah. So, like, however you have to do that to possess the ball and keep, keep the, keep possession away from Patrick Mahomes and that offense. Because that's one thing about that offense. Like, everyone asked me leading up to the game, like, hey, like, what do you think about the game? Who's going to win? I kind of – I'm set up – I'm leading San Francisco by, like, a point. Yeah. Because that offense is just <clears throat> so explosive. Like, if, if you're not on all your – if you haven't dotted all your I's and crossed all your T's, like, they will make you pay. And they did. Still hmm. an epic collapse, though. To be up 20 to 10 with the ball with Sorry. nine minutes to go and lose. That's just an epic collapse. Yeah, I don't know if I agree with that necessarily. Really? I mean, I think I think it is. Like, on paper, you say, oh, my gosh. But, like, they <laughs> played an outstanding, <laughs> outstanding football game. The San Francisco 49ers did for, you know. Three quarters. Yeah, three quarters. Certainly three quarters. Yeah. And, almost, and, like, you know, half the fourth quarter. And then the defense just runs out of gas. But the like, win probability when they pick off Mahomes with 12 minutes to go oh, is yeah. like 96. percent Yeah, 100. Yeah. percent Like you think so, but I think you know you're you're basing that on percentages that you've seen throughout NFL history, and I don't think we've seen an offense like Kansas City before. In the understood. NFL. Was Kyle your out of all the coordinators you dealt <clears> with, <throat> was he the sharpest? To can, oh, can, does, the best. Really, 100. percent I mean, like him and Sean are like you know really really special people. I think from an X's and O's standpoint, Kyle is you know 
maybe the smartest guy I've ever been around when it comes to football. Like, he just lives and breathes it like his dad. You put him um, above McVay even X's and yeah, his Yeah, McVay I, was a tight ends coach, right? Yeah, he was, yeah. So he was your tight ends yeah. coach. And who I th- was in the room at that time? Was uh, that the Fred Davis? Yeah, and so who else? the tight end coach left uh, left my, uh, <laughs> what was it, my rookie year, like midway through the season, and Sean took over. So it was Fred and Cooley and myself. And the next year it was the same was thing. Was Cooley – Older than McVay? Maybe not. It was right very close. I think age. he is older than him, actually, by like a year or two. So mm-hmm. it was kind of a weird dynamic. But that's <laughs> I think that speaks to Sean's ability. You know what I mean? Like you guys to, respected him. Yeah, like Cooley respected him. And I, I know you guys know Cooley. He yeah. is not a guy mm-hmm. who's going to like hedge anything. So mm-hmm. like for Sean to come into that room with a veteran like Chris and, and basically like earn his respect, I thought it was like awesome. Now you, right. So when you were with San Francisco – Jimmy G wasn't there yet. He was there. He just got there. They just oh, traded they for just him. traded for him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And they also had who? They had Bethard. Yeah, CJ Bethard. Bethard. That's right. Yeah. And was then, Gabbert there? No, he wasn't there. It was, so he Bra- was Brian Hoyer? Oh, that's right. It was Hoyer. Yeah. Okay. But so, what did you think of Jimmy G? I actually like Jimmy G quite a bit. I mean, he's got a very kind of unconventional leadership style for a quarterback. Most <laughs> quarterbacks are very cerebral and quiet. He's like a linebacker the way he leads. Very loud, boisterous. He really? He's going to oh, really? give you a headbutt. You know what I mean? Like very <laughs> into it. And I think guys play hard for him because they know that he's got that fire in him and that passion. So, they, so the guys like him a lot. Oh, the, yeah, they love him. Yeah, yeah. and like Does uh, that mean he's not cerebral? I think he's a smart guy. He's yeah. not just like his leadership style is not yeah. like kind of like, you know, like the chess master, like mm-hmm. oh guys, hey, we're with this, you know, this down it's like he's like no, we're going to let it rip and get after these guys just to, we can. Just to rewind cuz we'll have fun with it. How did you see Roberts leadership style oh wow uh <laughs> so you know when Different. i yeah when i was playing with robert he was very young very young yeah. player and i think he came out of baylor just winning the heisman and he won the rookie of the year and so he didn't really have to have a leadership style you know yeah. if that makes sense because he just could do whatever Did you he get swept away that rookie season how good he was offensively oh, did you just think it was going to continue so i thought i'm like i'm gonna because, like, you know, when the quarterback plays right. well, it's good for everybody. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm going to get a second contract here or a third contract here at the time, and I'm going to, you know, retire here. I'm going to play 10 years because if Robert's here, like, we're I know this be, offense, we're... like, we're going to be great. You know, yeah. we're going to win all these games, and yeah. no one's going to. And then, obviously, like, that's not how it went, you know. How, kinda... what, in your opinion, you had to sum it up, what do you think went wrong? I think, uh, I think Robert, you know, I like Robert. I think he's a good guy. He got a little ahead of himself yeah. too quick. Like, he wanted to be – uh, something that he wasn't ready to be at that moment, you a know. Drop like, back. Yeah, and I think, uh, yeah, that's right, a drop back quarterback. And I think that, um, you know, he didn't understand fully at that moment, like what his running ability was doing for the offense, right? And doing for doing to opposing defenses, because you know we'd go into a game and we didn't even like need to study really like what the other team was doing because we knew they were going to play an eight man box and run cover three the whole time mm-hmm. because of like the matchup problems that you get when the guy can run that way. And so when we got away from that a little bit, we started seeing more complicated stuff, more complicated fronts, more complicated pressures. And um, he wasn't ready for it. Yeah, I don't think. I mean, who is ready? You know what I mean? At that age, yeah, I yeah, think. Yeah. But like he, I, th- I think that's a big issue. But yeah, I mean, it's part. I mean, look, we saw the success of the Ravens and Lamar Jackson definitely passed well. But part of the reason is yeah. the way defenses have to react to a guy who was the fifth leading rusher in the NFL. Yeah, that's one hundred percent right. So I think how do you project next year, like for the Ravens and Lamar and the adjustments? How will that chess match play out? Um, I, I'm kind of I'm curious to see because I think one thing about the NFL and defensive coordinators specifically is you show them something enough and they find an answer for it. Mm-hmm. So I think when you watch Tennessee in the playoff game, they did a really good job. They have a very fast middle linebacker, and so what they did is they would kind of they they'd scrape the outside linebacker like the will linebacker like to the side of the zone read, and he would just uh, kind of trigger down. So like he kind of muddies the read. So basically the defensive end pinches across the tackle's face. And then there's a guy right there for the quarterback. Mm-hmm. And so that is problematic from just a read standpoint. Cause how do you read that? How do you coach that? How do you coach the quarterback to read that? And then, uh, their middle linebacker was so fast. He could just beat Lamar Jackson to the sideline because he had to kind of wrap around this will linebacker. And it just made it really challenging. And I remember Philadelphia doing something similar to us when Robert was playing quarterback, and we had a really hard time with that with our zone read stuff. So I think um, I would expect to see more teams doing that, especially if they've got a guy who can run at that middle linebacker position and just make it really challenging and to say, like, you're not going to beat us this way. Like, we're going to make you beat us throwing the ball.